My name's Helen, I am 21 years old uh, and I was diagnosed with primary mediastinal large B-cell lymphoma on the 24th of March in 2016. So I was ill for quite a long time before that, probably about five months. It felt like I had just quite constant chest pain. I went to various doctors, they really couldn't work out why I was really feeling ill. And then I went to my local hospital about three times and they kind of, not refused, but they really didn't want to do anything to me because of how young I was. They didn't want to expose me to any CT scans and I really did have to fight to be seen and taken seriously. The day I was told, I went into a room with the doctor and a couple of nurses with some tissues and there was kind of like two chairs and they just said, you have lymphoma and I was like, oh, what's that? Like, so I thought it was just an infection or something and he was like, no, it's like cancer. I was always like quite optimistic, but there were obviously days where I was really, really down and I was just, I just didn't know what was happening to me, you know, and all my, all my friends were really upset and and I, when I spoke to my like my clinical nurse specialist, I said like, is it weird that I'm not crying? Is it weird that I don't? I feel quite numb. And she was like, you know, that that's that's completely normal. Like most people feel like that, and that kind of like reassured me that there was other people that kind of related to me. I had a biopsy in my chest where I had to have a local anaesthetic on my chest, which was actually not that painful considering I was awake and they were like, kind of fiddling in my chest. It wasn't painful at all, just very uncomfortable. And then a couple of days after that, or it might be in the day after, I had to have a bone marrow biopsy because there's always a chance that with uh, lymphoma it can spread to your bone marrow. Um, and that really, really hurt, but I was very, very lucky. And I was only stage two. So they told me I would have chemotherapy um, and I would have six cycles. I was pretty scared because before then I had a really big needle phobia and my perception of chemotherapy was like people who have it are really skinny, look really ill, have no hair. What happened to me was the complete opposite because part of my chemotherapy was steroids. I put on loads of weight and I just didn't feel like myself and then obviously my hair started to fall out and, and I really regret the way I went about with my hair. I wish I'd just cut it off but instead I kind of let it fall out because I was so upset and now if I like if I could give advice to anyone it would be especially girls and women my age would be just cut it off and get it over and done with don't let it fall out because I'd wake up in the morning and I'd have a whole head of hair on my pillow and it'd make me really upset but apart from that it was it wasn't too bad it's not as bad as everyone thinks but you know you do get really tired and sick but you know you've got to carry on to get better. I started radiotherapy the end of August and I had that for four weeks. It wasn't too bad you know just the journey up from where I live to London was just a bit, a bit it, it, it gets tedious and I get very, get very tired and but the radiotherapy people were lovely and you know bit like the chemotherapy staff you know I saw them obviously a lot and you get to know them a lot um so obviously when that finished I was quite like quite sad to be quite sad to not see them but in the nicest possible way I didn't really want to ever see them again after radiotherapy they have to wait a few weeks to do another PET scan that wait was a bit frustrating because I just wanted to know and then I got my results in the December, on the 2nd of December 2016. I had no active cancer and I was really, really pleased, but like part of me was quite nervous to tell people that I was in remission. Everyone was just kind of really happy for me and I was really happy. But people who, I would say like acquaintances and things like that, when you tell them that I'm in remission and you, you know, you tell everyone, and everyone's like, oh, okay, you know, that's great. Like, it's all over now, you know, it's like, you never really have to think about it again. And you do kind of feel like, not really like I, you know, it's still, still the first thing I wake up and it's still the last thing I think about when I go to sleep, you know, it's always gonna be there with me now forever. Starting from December, I now go see my medical team every three months. You yeah, kind of have an end of treatment plan with your nurse specialist and she or he will just go over kind of the symptoms she's got to look out for. So all the normal kind of pains, lumps, bumps, chest pains, all the things that apply to that particular type of cancer. 
and you always get a list of kind of um, late side effects because of particular treatments. Relapse is always on your mind though, you always wake up and think, you know, you know what is if I do relapse, but you just have to kind of remain positive and how I think now is if it happens, at least I'm prepared, at least I know what's going to come if I do. So if I had any advice or any tips for someone who's just being diagnosed with this particular type of cancer, especially if you're kind of my age, I would definitely say get involved with charities. I think that is really important with ones like the Lymphoma Association and I found Click Sergeant and Teens Unite were a very good support for me. Yeah, and definitely don't Google anything. That is probably the worst thing you can do. Always get handed hard copies of everything. And also just knowing when your body says like to slow down and things, obviously like you can still do stuff when you're in treatment. You know, I still went out with friends and um, you know, went shopping meals out and things like that. But when your body is telling you to really slow down or you're tired, you really do have to listen to your body. If this is any time to listen to it, it's now, especially when you are having treatment that really does take its toll on you. Like even though you are young and you fit, it it does People think because you are young, you won't get as tired as much. But if anything now, like I do suffer from really bad fatigue. So you just got to be careful just to, just to, just to slow down and just remember, you know, you may be young, but you're not invincible. You know, you can't do everything all the time. And, you know, you must, you must let, you must let people know when you are feeling, you are having a down day and definitely talking to people is, is like, is a really good way whether it's kind of other people you meet that have counsel or to a counsel or something like that, they are really good resources to kind of take up and things like comp like some hospital, my hospital offered like complementary therapies when I was having treatment. They're really cool and you know, you can have like a massage while you're having your treatment and they're just like a nice way of just kind of relaxing while, while all the nurses are doing their job. You can, you can just have a relax and things like that.